you haven't got heart, then there's not really any point in being a fighter, you know? You need that heart because people love to see that, you know? It's like watching a, like a, a film, you know? And then like seeing a, a, a crazy brawl at the end, you know? The two crazy people just boof, going at each other, bow, 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 bow. Regardless whether you're cut here and your shin's swollen up like that, your leg's black, you can't move your arm, but you're still going at it. That's what people want to see. ผมก็ทั้งบ้านเราก็ไม่มีโอกาสได้เรียนสูงเพราะว่าเวลาเรื่องเงินเรื่องทองแต่ถ้าเราไม่ได้ชกมวยคงไม่มีโอกาสที่จะได้บินไปเมืองนอกอเป็นยุดมวยไทยให้โอกาสเยอะก็ผมมีธนาดีขึ้นกับยอดมวยไทย If someone's a kickboxer or wants to do Muay Thai You're going to go to Thailand where Muay Thai originated from. But then if you're going to go to Thailand, it seems that this spot in particular in Phuket has got it all. I've been here for seven years on and off since I was young. It almost killed me so many times, but that's the reason I come back here is because you feel alive. It's like a hidden fitness community in Phuket. So there's like the party area in Patong, and then there's this hidden fitness community over here. And it's kind of a lot of the lifestyle a lot of people want, where it's you just get up, you train, you surround yourself with brilliant people. All good people here, if you're into the martial arts, you get to meet a lot of uh, like high level fighters. Like you get to spar against the trainers, which have two, three hundred fights. The soy, it's crazy, it drew me here at the young age that I was, and the Cobra was this driving force of the soy. And he trains the best fighters who come to top team. These are the best fighters in the world, seen him. Hey, what's up? Let me. Interview, interview. <laughs> TV, TV. <laughs> He's saying like in Ubon, in this gym you have Lumpini champion, Raja Ramdan champion. It's all in Ubon because here they train properly. Like you know, the, the most legends were coming from Ubon Rajatan. Come, let's have a look at this. So this is the team. So th this is our trainer. Oh, that's Orono. That's Pinong. That's Sanchenai who Pinong fought as well. And uh, this is Pinai. This is him. And that's Sagmoko, another famous legend. It's like having four Mike Tysons in one gym of Muay Thai. In their gym, you did not hit pads with full power. The boss will not feed you. He was the first person to bring a foreigner and said, I'm going to train him like the Thai. The first year that I spent out here when I was 19, I was living at the gym. We were eating frogs and rats and sticky rice and training really hard. Outside, it was just raining and we would get wet, all of us. You know, so we couldn't train on raining days. And then slowly, slowly the fighters made money and we all worked together and then we expanded the gym and, and it's a good feeling because you build this all yourself. I've been both sides of the fence in Thailand. Into the jail, big drama, big problem, big headache, uncomfortable. And then I've done good deeds. That's the good side of the story. My adventure in Ubon. That's where I've done my good deeds and paid back my dues. Showed the qualities of a real man when I come up here. Phuket was just dramas for me. If you compare someone who's had 17 fights in Phuket and someone who's had 17 fights in Ishan, it's two different levels. It's two different levels. I cannot explain how, I can only show you. I've always been a fighter. When I was young, I used to like, love like Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, uh, the Rocky films. Thai people don't like reading. We watch movies. Schwarzenegger, whatever, Rambo, whatever. Kickboxer, yeah, kickboxer Kong Po. It's crazy like to think I watched that movie when I was like 13, 14, you know, and then I look at my life now and that's exactly what I'm doing. I mean, look at my profile picture on there, man. I've got that fucking rope on my hands. See that? I've got that rope on my hands. It's you, yeah? That's me, look at that rope. You know, that's like, that's some crazy shit. 
if they put a, a foreigner in a promotion, then all the guys would come for that foreigner. So if a ticket is 100 bar, just for the, because of that foreigner, the ticket they could turn into 150 or 200. Right. The, see the foreigner would do that? They no, know? they want to see a foreigner fight because they've never seen it. Because in Ubon, they won't give you a guy who's too good for you. They want to see 50-50 because they're here to gamble money. You know? so, and if they see an even fight, that's when they're like, yeah, they can gamble and they, they're excited. There's adrenaline to them. All the older guys have retired. So now there's a new team, which is the young kids, and they're getting older and older. And out of them, a, a kid I saw five years ago has become a very, very famous fighter. He had a 9 KO streak when he trained with our trainer, you know. This is the lunatic, boy. So these have been selected. He's seen them, all parents have come here. And they say, oh, can you please send our kids? And they test, they're like, all right. They look at the, the, what the physique is, what he's capable of, and, and how much he wants it. They make a deal with their parents. They're like, look, we'll take care of him and everything, but, but he has to follow our rules. If he's lazy, we're gonna kick him out. Once a fighter starts training, they live in the gym and they eat there, they sleep there, they study there. So you're expecting 10 to 15 years of their life in the gym. They want your heart to be here, you to be in the gym. You need to be full in the gym because this, is going to change your life. ที่ชกมวยก็คือพ่อพาไปชกแถวงานวัดก็จําได้เพราะว่าต้องเดินเดินเท้าไปประมาณ10กิโลครับถึงไปถึงวันถึงงานที่ชกชกครั้งแรกตอนนั้นชก3ยกแพ้แพ้คะแนนแล้วก็ได้เงินมา50บาทนี่คือค่าจ้าง My dad have a fighter then my brother fight also and I live Muay Thai. Sometimes I watch on TV, sometimes I read newspaper. This is not very special what he just said. He said, look, it's not that what this gym means to me. It's what the gym is doing because some of the kids don't have a mother or a father. They're all empty. Now, if he didn't help them train, then they would not know, know where to go in their life. Not, not teach only my type, teaching him how to work. But him not same as student, only he same as a, a young brother and uh, my son already. You know. The role he takes at the gym for a lot of the fighters is like trainer, cook, driver, mother, father, <laughs> manager. If you do it alone, you won't get anywhere. You need you have to help each other because this is a very tough game. It's not just a physical game, it's a mental game at the same time. Young kids are like skillful lads, like tough as mentally, like they fight like little weapons. So it's like real impressive to see them and inspiring to try and do what they do. Some Thai guy fight with Falang. Yeah. How come Thai always win? Just let my daughter who never train, just say, hey, hey. Okay, she can do it. Yes. Yeah. We want to create a community that gives back to the community again. So we want to create a school. Getting people like into a new environment where they're feeling more comfortable because this is where we're from. We're, we're part of nature, you know, so we need to get back to our cause and we bring the people back to nature to build the community and then to help re-educate the, the population. What set you yeah. off on this path in, in life? What brought you to this point? Taking, taking the, the joy out of a little kid's eyes, yeah. yeah. I was in the army and, you know, did some shit that I didn't, but that's another story, eh? <laughs> AJ's a soldier and he's a year older than me. He's ex-Afghan vet, Aussie. He's building this, this spiritual home and it's, it's been one of the most magical places I've ever seen. He's building this place specifically for soldiers with PTSD. There's a Thai shaman, he's a, he's a total raster and he takes you on a vision quest and you drink the potion, you walk down to the bottom of this place and, and you, you realize what you are. Yeah, the soldiers, when they come back, it's never ending fight, like for most, you know, like it's, it's an ongoing mental battle and a lot of people suffer from PTSD and then causes them to trigger psychosomatic events in their head, which then in turn 
makes them commit suicide. Getting sent away to war, fight battles for what? For government greed, oil, drugs, <laughs> for what? It's the job, the military, or this. The military would have been good for me. You know, I've already been there, I've, I've trained, I've done something with them. That's another which I don't talk about much. I was training in New Zealand and I just lost my job as a panel beater. I've been doing my time maybe two days a week. And my trainer who came to Thailand when he was young, he made it here as a fighter. And he said to him, I'm going to go to fish. He said, you are a son of a dick, you want to move to Thailand. So, so I did it. I guess I never saw it as like a poor life. I think maybe we get attached to too many things living that other lifestyle. A lot of people flock here to Thailand in that same mentality as an expat. And what is everyone running from? I think deep down everyone's running from something to be here. I'm running from the system. That's me. You are the judge of your own life here, but you have to find yourself first. You can't just walk in here and be like, I'm doing no. You have to be here by yourself to know who you are. Muay Thai is, it's not just a fight, it's, it's, it's a total spiritual, spiritual concept. I mean, they've got a wall with spikes on their elbows and spikes on their knees. So when they throw one, they come down on the top of your head with a fucking spike. You know, like, this, is, this is warrior shit. It's Muay Thai, it's not like MMA, you know, like, it's about respect. The Y crew at the beginning of the fight, that's all about respect, you know. If you Muay Thai, you must be hard first. Technique no good, no problem, we can learn. Slowly, slowly, I came to understand that having a heart in Thailand is not having the heart in, like, in, in the Western world. Having a heart in the Western world is like Rocky's taking a beating and just keep going, going. No, here, the heart to them means you're dead and you cannot throw anything, but you throw still full power, perfect technique. Like you just go forward, you do not show, you're like a lion. That's Thai heart. That's Muay Den, they call it, the forward walker. You walk forward, you do not move backward. I mean, I listened to this like story speech once, and there was this guy, and it was like, right, how much do you want to succeed? And he was like, more than anything in the world. So what the guy done, he grabbed him, he put his head under water, yeah? Brought him back up, and he's like, how much then did you want to breathe? And he got like, more than fucking anything. And he was like, if you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe, then you will succeed. ที่จะอยากชนะทําอะไรก็ได้ให้ชนะ so I ran 15 k's in total today, jumped 20 minutes on the rope, 10 rounds on bag, 10 rounds on pads, half an hour clinching at the end tonight. I literally had this guy knocking me out in training, man. As, as I get up from getting knocked out, he'd be like, yo, yo you, got a minute, you got a minute 12. You said everyone has to work their way up, right? Yeah, so you yeah, yeah my fight's yeah, in the ghetto, yeah. We go there on the back of the... Back of the pickup truck, all, all of us on the back of it. Who is this guy I'm fighting? How many fights yet? What's gonna happen if I get a big cut? Being knocked out's not really too much of a problem because you don't you don't know and you just get up. I fought twice at Max, won both of them. Went and fought in Cambodia, won that. They were shocked about that. No one expected that. They don't send foreigners there to win, you know what I mean? Mouth was open, his eyes were open. I thought that motherfucker was dead. This is blood, sweat and tears. This is, you know, like, where I make my money through fighting and I'm dying and I have no money. To, like, you know, if I don't fight, I don't eat. Recreated myself. Recreated myself. Rewired my brain. Well, I think. Because of the Muay Thai, the Muay Thai. If he improve, I take him fight in Bangkok. Maybe he start maybe 5,000, 8,000 maybe. If he win, get up price, up price. I want me 10,000, 15,000, maybe 50,000, 100,000. I mean, my whole life has evolved around Muay Thai now, you know. 
I could go back to England and work and do a normal job, but I'm not normal. You know what I mean? I'm not a normal person. Not at all. And I'm not fucking afraid to say it either, you know? I'm not just going to be a simple to normal life. I'm going to die and no one's going to remember me. People, I want people to remember me when I die. No matter what it's for. 